the Feastables Chocolate Milk Part 2. We're checking to see the proteins this time. So all bovine protein, so it's definitely cow's milk. And we're gonna go ahead and digest this. So it's gonna be a protein precipitation on the milk, and then we're gonna digest it with trypsin, and then we're gonna put it onto the Q-Top and figure out uh, if it's really whole milk like they're saying it is. This is whole milk, so good job on the proteins. Uh, in this uh, Mr. Beast Feastables chocolate milk. All right, let's go. All right, we got the chocolate milk here from the Feastables. We're gonna, and then we're gonna do my standard protein digestion method, and we'll look and confirm uh, that milk proteins and which ones they're using. So we got 200 microliters for protein method. Proteins we're precipping with this acetonitrile zinc sulfate solution, and for. So you can see the goal for all this is to just precipitate and crash out the protein and everything and split things into clear layers. And so we're after, on the left, in the protein method, we're after that actual precipitated pellet right there. See that's precipitating really nicely in the acetonitrile. And right now we got them on the centrifuge, we're just going to spin these guys out. Alright, and the protein pellet looks really pelleted nicely. Usually at the bottom there below is like sugar. Um, so for the protein sample, we're going to reduce with DDT, we're going to modify with acrylamide, and then reduce it, and then eventually digest it. Uh, and so we're just going to go ahead and get some DDT stock out of the freezer. And so we'll do all the steps and get it onto the heating block to digest overnight. Digesting in the incubator, and we'll go ahead and put it on that Q-top in the corner there and get some proteomics results. All right, next day, digest off uh, the incubator. It's clearly still brown, not digest. Maybe I should have done pepsin and trypsin, but there's a lot of insoluble protein you can see still. I just overloaded it. I just did way too much protein. Uh, and so now, since I know I did way too much, I'm gonna dilute this out one mil of uh, the formic acid. Should be here somewhere. I usually use 1% formic acid. Where's my 1% formic acid at? Oh man, people be taking my stuff. Look at that, it's not supposed to be right there. Anyways, 1% formic acid. And then we'll spin it out, and we'll put it on the Q-Top. All right, out of the fuse. All right, on to Zevo Q-Top, it's the go-to. This is a 60 minute proteomics method. Look at that. Washing it. Only about halfway through. We'll see if we get peaks across the whole thing. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm running it both on the same wet, same 60 minute method, same gradient, hexyl phenyl column chromatography versus C4. Completely different. They both do a great job. Let's we'll see who's better. All right, full data set. I mean, those hexyl phenyl peptide peaks are crazy sharp, guys. I mean, that is nuts. And so let's check it out, the C4 to compare, much blobbier and broader, similar retention times. You can see the peaks are considerably broader, much, much broader. So we're just going to process that hexyl funnel data. All right, using Peaks Studio 12, we're going to make a new project here. So we got the Feastables, we are going to be saving it in my Peaks folder, and then we're using trypsin as the enzyme off the Zevo QTOF with CID fragmentation and DDA. We're just going to load that one file because the phenylhexyl file is way better peak shape than uh, the C4. Um, and then we're going to just move towards workflow selection. Okay, so we're doing the Peaks DB workflow selection data refine, leaving this as it is. The database I'm going to search is just the all species massive Uniprot database with like 571,000 things. And then I'm going to bump the miscleavages up to like maybe like five, you can even go higher. That seems really generous for air, probably sub 10 ppm, maybe even sub 5 ppm. And then for PTMs, uh, since we are we doing the prop and amid, I like to do everything variable and the prop and amid on the cysteine as well. So I hit both lipine and cysteine. I do it as variable, and uh, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna do PTM search. I'm gonna use spider. Might as well just use everything we got here, um, and then enzyme is trypsin. 
and it is look at that that quality control. We're not dead. It's just for fun. Report, and we're gonna go ahead and save the analysis. All right. I right, done database searching. Look at this. We have casein. So these are all bovine proteins. So it's definitely cow's milk. And then we have casein one and two. It's exactly what you want to see in milk. Beta lactoglobulin beta casein, kappa casein. I mean, this could be some of the best milk protein data I've seen. I mean, this has exactly uh, what you want to see in milk. A lot of times when their high protein milk supplements just in this lactoglobulins, uh, but, and you don't see any casein, but we're seeing, we're seeing the whole, I mean, this is whole milk. So good job on the proteins.